framing with you. Always not a little bit. Welcome to The Shakedown. I am here with special guest uh, Malone. And if you don't know, I am Ryan, a.k.a. Rainforest. I spent six years in Texas prison. And uh, I got a degree in sociology specializing in social welfare while I was in there. And that's where I had met we Malone. We all know what that's worth. Yeah, exactly. We do know what that's worth. We're going to discuss that today, actually. And then we and um, that's where I met Malone, who spent thirty years in prison, and um, along with being a professional artist now, he is also an expert in orangutan cage fighting. And we um, we also have another special guest who does not like appearing on camera tonight, and um, that he is just was here. that is uh, Dave Brown. Here he is. Here he is. He's here coming. He is. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> there we go. Who just moved into his new place where we where they are live from tonight. And uh so yes. Kind of. Kind of. Uh and and tonight we're going to talk about accomplishments. So um let's go ahead, Malone. All right. I I, I gave you the intro. Go um what what did you want to say? Uh, well, first of all, I don't know why I'm talking about accomplishments because I really have, like I, like I mentioned earlier, uh, I feel like I'm rather light in the accomplishment category. I mean, I've done some very basic things that pretty much all humans that are my age do, and those feel like accomplishments to me, <laughs> which is kind of sad. I mean, because as we just, as we know, uh, it, it wasn't too long ago that I couldn't even find my way back from the corner store. That's less than five minutes from here. So that's why, you know, uh, the, the talking about accomplishments doesn't sound like something I should be doing. And Dave and I were both, uh, both got on Malone's case because Malone actually has a they, bunch they of accomplishments. That I, okay. All right. <laughs> okay. One, one is just I mean, a simple I, fact it, that he's had a job yeah. since he's been out of prison this entire time, which not many people can say um, for themselves. Um, he also has an apartment. Oh I yeah, own, so. I still have an apartment. No, but when first walking out of prison, he you know he didn't have to go to a halfway house or any of that uh, shit. So. I, I will say that I was told by everybody in prison whenever they would ask me what I planned on doing, I was getting out, and I told them, you know, well, you know, I'd like to get my own place, my apartment. They all laughed at me and told me it's impossible for me to get my own apartment. That no apartment will ever rent to me because of my you know having been in prison, and I have gotten two apartments. Right. I appear to be turned down for an apartment. And so has Dave now. So that is pretty badass for everyone involved. And I've gotten a place too, which I did not. I, unlike you, did not get a place, uh, an apartment when I first got out. I spent the first yep. part of my time out with my, my lovely mom. So, yeah. And having survived that is also an accomplishment. <laughs> that is an accomplishment. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Yes, yeah, survi no, surviving uh, a Jewish mother is well, always an accomplishment. Uh, Miss Forrest, don't, uh, please don't. <laughs> take it. No, she knows, she knows uh, what, she, this is what she expects when I talk about her. She, she's waiting for my Mommy Dearest book to come out any day now. Oh, come on. Can't be that bad. No, no she's <laughs> literally <laughs> expecting it. <laughs> Notice I'm drinking Monster. Oh, out, of a pink, out of a pink can. Uh -huh. Notice on my new iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Apple and Monster. The Shakedown is currently looking for sponsors. So if you are hey, looking, you know, <laughs> I don't normally write stuff, but when I do, I use a sharpie. Nice. So, uh, if y'all experience any surge in sales, and if you ever want to cut somebody, you know, oh, no, bench made is oh, the way to go. <laughs> That's going to hit the editing room floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. We're, we're going to be rolling in sponsors any day now. And you know what's great for a nice, great snack while you're doing podcasts? Del Monte oh, canned pineapples. Oh, yes. <laughs> that sounds like a perfect snack. I'm just going to pop one of those cans open and whenever I'm feeling just a little nippish. Get in touch with your inner Hawaiian. Yes. We can yeah. clearly see no, no, the Hawaiian. Like, 
Exactly. Because I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. <laughs> or he can see clearly because he has his glasses on. It's true. So, all right. So, one thing we brought up to, we taught you, um, you talked about uh, Mo, who, um, or like, well, first off, we, the reason we brought up Mo was because before the show, um, which in the pre show, which we will actually have um, little bits of that I can release online now, which will be fun. Um, but uh, we can. Much better than the real thing, the pre show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the pre show where you can see what we're like. That could be it. Off that the camera. Be great, that could be like much better than the real thing. That could be an advertisement slogan for a male sex toy. Much <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be a great, yeah. Not looking for sponsors. That's, yeah. Yeah, we always go down that ro- route. That's right. Oh. We are definitely <laughs> going under the, the explicit header for this episode. Um, so we're going to. Um, so we talked about Malone is actually he's become a professional artist since getting out, which was one of his goals, and um, which is which is awesome. Oh yeah, one of my lifelong goals and dreams. Yep. In fact, he designed the shirt I'm wearing right now, the Warp Ranger uh, sh- hoodie that I'm wearing right now, that you can even purchase yeah. online and support. Malone hustle. We can't, how come we can't see uh, your uh, Warp Ranger hoodie? Well, you may not be able to because um, the you're looking f- at a camera from a camera, but the audience at home can see the Warp Ranger designed uh, hoodie. And okay, uh, awesome. That was uh, designed. That was uh, drawn by Malone and inked and colored in by yours truly. So. Um, it's yeah. So that is that is something as well. <laughs> what was that to oh, hate? Gonna, for? I said you like to color. He's gonna. I get, do. He's gonna be sick with all. Uh, whenever I start dropping these pages on him here in the near future, I can hear it now. It's gonna be. I remember how frustrated he was with that one. He's acting now. He's all <laughs> proud of it. But whenever that first happened, he was like, "I am never. You're gonna have to find somewhere." I uh, buy a tablet, something. He was, he was, uh, yeah, it was, he swore he would never do it again. There was, it wasn't inking in this. It was doing the lettering for the comic. That's what I was doing. Doing the lettering. Yeah. That was, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. That that's was what lovely. broke my <laughs> soul. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Somebody was actually asking about that just the other day on Instagram. Right. The lettering on the comic, that was a severe pain, and I have yet to find a much, a better way to do it. There's There might be a better app, but that's a whole different t- tangent. Which, speaking of which, another... And he didn't even get credits for it in the comic book. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, there's two names on the cover, and one of them is Malone, but the other one definitely isn't Rainforest. And that's, you have to go that flip cover, to the back cover. cover. <laughs> he has a special mention. Yes. Special mention to the well, guy who published the, the book. Uh, the bio of those two names in the back of that comic book, he probably appreciates that it wasn't him that was on the front cover, whose name wasn't on the front cover. Yes. But speaking of... He'll have the sun, though, with the next issue, trust me. Right. But the, but here's the thing. They, the um, Speaking of accomplishments, you also, both of us, actually, we had a, we had a uh, table... And hosted a panel at Fan Expo, which that was so huge. That I felt like such a rock star during that. You, I mean, I've had I've shown that that video to people here, and they think like they love it. Everyone who watches that video is super impressed, and they love they love watching that video and 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 hearing about about everything. And I'm I can't wait to sign up. I'm going to sign us up for at least three panels to do three panels at the next one, which that's another thing. We're going to have a booth. Three, one each day, which I think, I think maybe you, uh, I'm sure you guys have seen Home Alone and thought, how cool would it be? Would you mind turning down your uh, phone, Dave, please? We're in the middle of a podcast here. Uh, you might be uh, biting off more than you can chew. Maybe you might be disappointed with the outcome of that. I mean, I was shocked that anybody showed up at all for the first one. That might have been lightning in a jaw in a in a bottle or whatever the term is. So one thing. 
so those of you, if you want to watch that panel, that is in our, like, you can look at our podcast. There's us at Fan Expo, the Shakedown at Fan Expo. That is the ep- episode we're talking about. And uh, you can you can actually watch it on our YouTube channel and see what we're talking about. And um, for those of you, you can't really tell in the video how big the audience is, but we were actually the last panel of the entire convention. When when we got the last done, panel, we uh, were in the in the second to the last hour altogether of the convention. I mean, everybody's going home, right? There were, and but the, whenever we got up, there was we were looking in the room of the people that were before us, and there was like two people in there all together. I, I just knew we were going to be speaking to an empty room, right? We when we um, when we were doing those that panel. Like, yeah, so two people came out of the room at from the panel before ours. Then our panel was the last panel of the day. There were no there were not going to be any panels during that last hour because th- that the um the people who put the panels together, they were actually packing uh, they were gonna pack up the rooms while for that last hour. and then the, and then they just left the convention floor open for that final hour. And so when we finished up our pa- panel, we had 10 people come to the panel, which I was at Fan Expo the year before. 10 people at a panel, that was like that was like a, a, a medium-sized panel, a medium-sized audience for the panels at the last one. And so I was surprised that we got that audience. And then on top of it, what happened at the end was that we, every single person, including the volunteers – who were who were there just to monitor our panel? All went upstairs and bought comics from us. Which Four was, of them bought more than one comic. Right, because they they know that Aaron Malone is going to be one day be making all sorts of comics all over the place once he has some time to do some more drawing and spend you know spend time on that. And maybe once I have some time doing some storytelling. Break away from the day job. Right. So. And I appreciate. No, go ahead. No, 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 I'm just just making that. I didn't want to, didn't want to sound like I don't have deep gratitude towards my employers because they're, they're keeping me alive. I understand. I I understand the gratitude that I, I, it is notice in the fact that you have been so loyal to them for so long. I am the one who gives them crap. <laughs> I will take full on that one. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, so so those are some big ones. And then so what we talked about afterward, like Malone hasn't been able to do like be a professional artist full time. And he brought up that another uh, another inmate, Mo, who we had was in our – was in the Jewish community over on the Stringfellow unit. And um, and what were you saying about Mo? Well, can you get a job as an engineer? Right. Uh, I'm saying that, you know, degrees. And so we were we were mentioning how people live with all these fancy degrees and, you know, so forth, consider that to be such an accomplishment. But I was debating whether or not that is such an accomplishment, considering how many people we know with – master's degree or more that, that uh, cannot find employment in their particular field. They, they have a, they have uh, the paperwork, the diploma, the, I mean, they have the bragging rights of having accomplished all that and, and they paid for it, but they can't do anything with it. So, I mean, is there really all that great of an accomplishment? That was coming on the heels of another discussion we had, because I was saying, I was, I mentioned that, I mean, how hollow the accomplishment is of just being gainfully employed because really I'm leaning very heavily on uh, a friend of mine, another guy that we were that I was locked up with and was also in the Jew, part of the Jewish community that I knew for a long time, who was in a similar position to me. We were both uh, locked up in the early 90s as teenagers, and, and uh, he's helping me out. And I don't think I would still have that job at all because I am terrible at this job. I, am all, I would have been fired 20 times. But had not been for the fact that I personally know these people that own the that own the business, and of course, uh, Asian Dave then said, "Well, no, that's par for the course because pretty much everybody that uh, uh, gets in positions in life generally does so through people they know and not necessarily through 
their own personal merits. I mean, you can even relate it to prison. People in prison, like the people that have like, you, you could get a job in the crap shop unless you do something. Coming, uh, over here in the camera, Dave, so that you're not just a disembodied voice. Everybody wants oh to see, how, see your pretty face. They're going to have to get over here. Come on. Come on over. Come on. <laughs> little, little fellow, come on over here. He's got my bald head right there. That's it. But he was saying that, that it's that way in prison as well. And he's, and he's uh, to a certain extent, right. I mean, prison, uh, rain, Rainforest has some very firsthand experience with how how you get jobs and how jobs are, are maintained and so forth in prison, and it's not through the merit of, of of how well you do your job. It's it's generally because of uh, how well you manipulate the people that are <laughs> that you work for. Don't rewind in the kitchen. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We saw we watched that, or at least I got to watch that with Dave. Yeah, um, but. Um, yeah, no, it's. I agree. I agree. It's a lot of it is not necessarily. It's not necessarily about merit. It's about knowing people, but also that is a skill. That is, you, you got to know part of like. They got to know you, Malone. Too. You have to realize is they understood what type of person you are, and even if you didn't have the basic skills on whatever you're doing, they knew that they could rely on you because they got to know you. So that's a big part of it. And the, and the other part of it, and and if, if, uh, if Roger, my boss, my direct boss, then the guy that's over, if he ever saw it, sees this podcast, he's going to laugh himself into a stroke <laughs> whenever he hears what you just said. But anyways, keep going. Well, I would say that, and the other thing I would say too on that is that the is uh, is basically is about Mo. The thing I really wanted to say was about Mo. Um, so. Uh, we, you also brought up the fact that we don't know what people are in for, and I I can totally attest to that. I don't know. I didn't. I haven't looked Mo up. I haven't done my research on it. But I, what I will say is the stories I heard about Mo is the fact that he had gotten so ridiculously many DUIs. I did not see what happened. What the heck happened? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, for those in the audience who don't know, Dave has some of the worst farts uh, going on <laughs> right now, and apparently they're really bad, and they and they are destroying Malone. I'm having to sit there and try to keep a straight face while this guy is just marinating me in, the, in mustard gas. Oh my god, I can't, I can't do it no more. <laughs> I reached my tolerance. I'm 30 years in prison. You think I'd be able to tolerate some gas? Nope. Wow. No, you're not. You're not. Uh, and yeah. Even after I've yeah, even after Dalhart unit where I was trapped and next to a pig farm, and had to like remember those nights like tucking myself under the covers trying to breathe. Uh, <laughs> that yeah, uh, one one well timed fart will knock you out. Um, Ooh, I'm pretty good at that. I, it seems like it seems. Like. Oh, yeah. Um, oh. Oh, <laughs> I've accomplished making Malone sick, so I've made I have achieved a goal today. <laughs> Dave, Dave has another achievement I, other than his many achievements. I, I didn't realize it was a, and it, it was going to be a goal or an achievement until <laughs> recently, but it worked out pretty well. He didn't know how it, it wasn't until he realized just how satisfying it is to mm -hmm. disgust me to my core. I am such a child, too, oh. when it comes to farts. <laughs> Just when it comes to farts. I'm not like uh, tethered <laughs> to one particular place I can escape them. Not this time. Oh, God. Look what I found, people. Uh, there, nice. There we go. Perfect. All right. Now I... I all right. Let's get back to Mo because we're getting on our last five minutes here. But uh, All right. So Okay, but, we were, but what we were talking about, we just you were using Mo as an example because he is someone who has a master's degree in electrical engineering, and right. he couldn't use it. Well, he, he said he couldn't. He, he said he couldn't find a job in electrical engineering, and as right. a you know, he had to, you know, he had to become a simple mechanic, you know, which is something that you can, I mean, learn to do with a simple, uh, um, you know, uh, trade. Uh, 
A high school diploma, uh, mo a lot, most high likely. Diploma, right, does, does not require a, a, a high, uh, master's degree. Right. And that's what he did with his life. And I will say, this is the thing I'm going to say to that, is that I was, when I first went to school, I went to school for computer engineering, and which is half electrical engineering and half computer science. And a lot of people, what they did with their elect electrical engineering degree is exactly what I did with computer science or, and actually electrical engineers, he had an even broader range because computer engineering was specifically for, you weren't, you were going to make circuits like circuit boards or circuit or, or ch um, computer chips when you get out. And, but you were going to make a lot of money when you got it because not many people had that degree. And then on top of it, uh, electrical engineers, they could, they, they could work on like, um, the the government and everything, they're constantly looking for electrical engineers. There's all sorts of jobs that are looking for people with electrical engineering uh, degrees. Really? Now, really? Yeah. And the the, the reason I was going to say that Mo couldn't wasn't going to find an electrical engineering job and why he was having issues with it was because of what people were saying was his issue, which is that he got multiple multiple DUIs. And if you let him out, if you let him out tomorrow, he was going to go drink again. <laughs> so, which he bragged about many times. So that's the reason why he had a hard time with employ employment. Like, that's the issue. I think that all, I think that his uh, original application, I mean, he actually applied for a job as an electrical engineer. He, uh, for, at one point, I think he, he did have a job as an electrical engineer, but it didn't last very long. The, the company uh, laid him off. They had too many electrical engineers. And after that, he couldn't find employment uh, doing it ever again, if I remember his story correctly. It's and not like he was drunk. I don't think that, no, I don't think that <laughs> had anything to do with him being I don't think any of that had anything to do with him being drunk because he didn't have that record yet. It wasn't until later on in life, and he was already um, uh, invested heavily into the idea of just being a uh, mechanic. Because, of course, he eventually opened up his own shop. I – look, I've been laid off as a computer scientist, and I've been able to find work again. Like, I mean, it's I, – I, it took – like, I got laid off in 2008 when the – when there, they weren't hiring again. There was a hiring freeze at that time. And computer scientists compared to electrical engineers were a dime a dozen. Um, there were way more computer scientists than there were electrical engineers at that time, and it and so I I hear it's just like the the I really do you do you agree with uh, Asian Dave's statement that most most of these people that do have those jobs it's it's a matter of not necessarily their merit or their accomplishment but just who they know or do you think that you know. I could, I mean, do you think that it it would pan out for most people if they so decided, okay, they set their heart on it? How many kids grow up and tell you, I want to be a marine biologist? I want to be able to, you know, go out there and swim with dolphins or something and, and, and study uh, um, killer whale behavior. I mean, and how many of them that get those degrees that go to college to become that actually ever get to do anything with it? I mean, there can't be that many people out there getting paid to be marine biologists. Well, I would... I, I will tell you that it's a combination of two things, and it's and this is actually the the formula I've heard for success in life. And one is it's there's a large chunk. If you hear a lot of people who are really successful and famous and things like that, they will tell you the story they'll always automatically go to is their their lucky chance, their lucky break, where um, they met this person or. They got this the this opportunity opened up, or and it was just by pure chance. They had it was no merit. Um, there was no there was no skill involved in it. It was just being at the right place at the right time. But the thing was, is that they had been doing the thing that they had wanted to do for so long and been pushing so hard at it for so long at that point that when that opportunity popped up they were ready to take advantage of it. If you aren't ready to take advantage of it, then that luck, that lucky break means nothing. 
you won't get, gain anything from it. So it's a combination of the two. I'm not hearing that's a combination of the two because it doesn't sound like they're merit as, as um, in the skill of the, that is associated with whatever field that they're trying to get into. It sounds to me like it's just more of the determination. But do you think, I mean, are you are you literally telling me you think that, that everybody that's employed is a matter of, or, or the majority of people that are out there that are employed in these jobs, these, these big positions, uh, are there due to some kind of lucky sh- uh, uh, happenstance? So just they were dedicated to it. They they really wanted this job, and 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 so you know they stuck it out, and the opportunity arose. And that and so you're suggesting that everybody in life do that. All these marine biologists, all these little girls that want to go out there and play with Shamu are going to be able to eventually do that if they all stick with it. It, no, I'm not. I'm not saying. What I'm saying is, is that there's a. It's a buildup. Like there, it. It stink. This is one of the things they talk a lot about in sociology. Is that people? It's a buildup. It's yeah. It's a buildup of. of <laughs> benefit. Answer, no, no. Like let me. For the two. Like it's. A, yeah. So yeah, the reason the reason you get to know get to so, like you know someone well enough to get that awesome job is because you've already had like if you were born in New York City in the like in Manhattan and you lived already you're you're already immersed in this super connected group of wealthy people so you're going to already have a bunch of advantages that other people don't have and you're going to have connections just because you're living and was born in that area that that people don't have access to and because you're living there and you're you're around these people all the time, they'll get to know you, and then you'll you'll get to see see these opportunities that other people just don't e- they don't even know exist. And like if you go, like one of the biggest advantages people say about going to an Ivy League school, it's not the 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 quality of the degree. That's not the thing that's really the advantage. The advantage is the yes, it's the connections you make while you're there. Which, which I can I can see that which it equals who you know right who you know that, that falls in the who you know category. I'm, I'm, that's know. what I'm waiting on is for you to to uh, pick a to pick a side in this debate and, and stick with it. You yeah, you keep on. You uh, don't join a fraternity. You join a fraternity for one of two reasons. Isolating between the two. Ideas. Either make contacts or because you're gay. One or the other. So. <laughs> That was excellent. I love that. Um, it's, I'm shaking my head on that. I'm or scratching my head on that. I'm just, I don't get there, that but, but Malone, there's uh, – because you, you weren't exposed to many fraternities, and thank goodness, Malone, because they would they would corrupt the <laughs> hell out of you. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. That's so much better than I went to prison. Yeah, no. Well, I went to a lot of gays in prison, too. Right, right. <laughs> We have to wrap this you're up. How, you're how Force just laughed. I think you're right. <laughs> I remember his fist bump, too. <laughs> you got that one. You got that one fixed, though. Oh, my God. Hey, Dave, come over here and let's show the world no. what, 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 uh, what oh, fist gosh. Was. Oh. That was, that's how he fist bumped. Listen, yeah, dude, one, one more time. There was, first and foremost, he had he had the wrist thing wrong. He held his wrist wrong, and he would, <laughs> he would go in and he would scoop up whenever he fist bump. So you go to him, hey, what's up, man? And you put your fist out like that. And he, oh. not to mention, <laughs> not to mention, he had a disco yarmulke that was like fluorescent orange that just like glowed. Uh, so that I that stole from dope. Hudson. That was that great. Was <laughs> that, was, that, that got me screamed. Oosh, oosh, no, oosh, that, oosh. That, that yarmulke was dope as as. Fuck, dude, that that so fit him because I mean it just looked so right on all that redhead <laughs> thing he's got going on with his skin. Oh my gosh, that, guys, that, that guys, was like colors. <laughs> we have, and, to... of course, he never had to worry about getting shot while he was getting while he was hunting. <laughs> we 
we have to wrap this up. This has been an awesome episode of The Shakedown. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Malone. Thank you, Agent Dave. Thank you, all of we'll our... Be, we'll, be, uh, we'll be more serious next time. <laughs> yeah, <a lot. laughs> And thank you for all of our future sponsors. And good night. The Shakedown was produced at Longmont Public Media. And our theme song, Shakedown, was brought to you by Envato Elements. If you want any Shakedown merchandise or you want to support the show, you can go to waywordpress.com. That's W-A-Y-W-O-R-D press.com.